Sup guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about more optimization stuff and today I wanted to try something new that I have never done before. I'm going, I would try to optimize lights. Uh, so as you know in Unreal, um, I don't know if you have played around with lightning before, but lightning in Unreal is really, really expensive in performance, especially if you're using dynamic lights. So what I've created here is a little blueprint that allows us to control the light and its intensity and stuff based on the player position uh, or distance to that light so we can have a lot of lights but uh, if you're far away from them they're going to be turned off or you know uh, they impact less performance so you know that i have already set up the scene and stuff that's because i already done this because i have never i have never done that before i didn't know if it would work correctly so i've done it before so i'm going to show you everything step by step what i've done first thing i went into file and created a new level and then I just go ahead. Uh, I created the new level here on the in an empty level. So what I have to go ahead and uh, into lights. I drag the directional light, a skylight, and actually a sky sphere. So you can search that over here. Boom, drag that up. I just went into my uh, my directional light, and I have rotated it so it would be nighttime. So I kind of rotated to the road to be pointing up. That's because the light is. Uh, shooting to you know our ground over here so you can kind of see the stars in the sky for the sky you can click on the sky sphere go into our direction light actor you can see choose your light from over here and then just click refresh material and it will update like this I just went in our skylight uh, where is it there you go our skylight I went in and just played around with the intensity and I th yeah I think I ended up leaving it on one so that's gonna be fine Another thing, I double click the third person character. I went into the character movement first and I put the walk speed a little bit fast. So that's probably from the last video. It's going to be already 6000. And I went in into our follow camera uh, and we're in our settings of our, um, of our post processing effects. I went into auto exposure that is on the lens. I clicked on minimum and max brightness and I set one to default. So, you know, without the eye adaptation like this, we not gonna like we're gonna be able to see the lights correctly, so I think that's gonna be better. So you can see that I have these meshes over here in the middle. You can go ahead and go into geometry and just drag a couple into the scene. That's what I did. And you know now you can see this light. This light is actually um, not the light dragged from the lights over here. It's actually inside the blueprint. But you're gonna see that in a minute. You're also gonna need to drag in uh, an, an, uh, an exponential light fog so click on fog and drag that into the scene and I just change a couple of settings I change the fog intensity to 0 0.005 and I think I clicked on volumetric fog and left the rest as default now for the actual light uh, blueprint I right click uh, create a new blueprint class make it an actor uh, call out the light double click that open and never mind this code go into the viewport uh, go into the components you can drag in a point light, uh, drag it into the default right component to make it the root, and then uh, we're going to need to change a couple of settings. So first of all, I made this a candela, so it's probably on unitless, I made that a candela. Basically these are uh, types of intensity of light, so they kind of give different results, you can test around with this. It's like to have different light sources, so they kind of appear different, one more intense, others more, you know, uh, my unitless like the the one uh, on top but I, I'm just gonna use the candelas for this the intensity I put it on 160 uh, attenuation radius I put a default of 2000 I used um, uh, two for the volumetric scattering and I think I clicked on cast volumetric shadows over in the end of this light uh, settings so just uh, expand this panel and check that in. That's just for a little bit more, you know, better lightning basically. Now I'm gonna go into the event graph and actually show you the code. So you can go ahead and right click, get an event tick. And just to explain you quickly what I've been doing here, basically I got this node which you can right click and get distance to. So this basically allows you to get the, how many centimeters two actors are away from each other so I'm just gonna get from the light to our get player character so you can actually get that from here get player character drag that in connect that to the other actor leave the rest to self 
and you can see this that I have a couple of um, booleans over here so uh, basically checks so I basically did this so drag from over here and type in your uh, lesser than and greater than signs so you can use those so just type a greater than and a less than and then you can just go ahead and duplicate that uh, two times and from the first one just grab an end boolean so end boolean over here and connect the greater than to the top and the lesser than to the, um, the you know the end part do the same thing again uh, on another set of those so again drag from the greater than drag an end and plug that the other one to the, the other one and then just get a uh, greater than to the last part now from each end just drag a, b a branch and do that again and do that for this greater than the last one that you have isolated and from the first branch i basically got the point light for my components i direct from it i get set visibility because i'm going to set this visibility to false down here but we get that and we'll get there in a minute toggle the new visibility to true drag from the point light again and set the attenuation radius and set that to a thousand that's going to be off the default value we gave it up here so that's because we are already a couple of units away and you can see that on the first one the first way then I use a uh, thousand centimeters uh, to five thousand and then from five thousand to ten thousand and then greater than ten thousand I did another one and then I just set a print string that's so I can see the value uh, you know in the screen it's not really important uh, then I did another uh, another point light uh, I set the visibility to true I basically did the same thing as up here I just set the new radius to 500 so the light uh, is going to be um, you know with a lesser radius uh, from 5,000 5, units to 10,000 units and then from the false I got another branch from there basically in here I just um, turned the light completely off so I got uh, on the set visibility I turned this off and then just set a print string called eye and then from the false this is going to be its normal state so set the visibility to true make that 2000 or any default value that you got over here uh, on the attenuation radius and make this normal now this is all the code that I use right now these values are kind of too close to the light so you're going to see it popping but you know this is just so I can uh, show you the example and this is just basically a, a really quick code that you can set up um, your lights to toggle off, but that's you're gonna be thinking why are we on when our distance gets further away? You're setting the attenuation to be smaller. So why are we doing that? That's because in Unreal if you click on the point light the attenuation radius you can over that and you can read this clamping of the lights influence is not physically correct But very important to performance larger lights cost more so the more attenuation you have the bigger the impact on performance but uh, for you to have, uh, you know, a beautiful light or a light that does its job as you want them to, you're going to need a, a bigger attenuation radius. But when you're further away from the light, well, you're not going to be closer to that light to you actually be able to see it in detail. So as, as far away you get from that light, you can start turning this off or, you know, into a smaller values. So it doesn't cost as much performance. Then when you get far enough that you're not going to be seeing that light at all, you can just go ahead and hide it from the game. So you don't need to be having it costing performance so if you have this uh, i can just go ahead and show you I'm going to the map I'm gonna go ahead and play so now you can see that uh, that thousand is basically telling us that this light uh, attenuation is at thousand if i get closer to it it's just going to say that it's at two thousand or it's uh, at its normal state and you can see kind of the light popping you can see that it gets further away into the ground that basically is uh, putting the the performance to F into this light and as you get further away it gets 200 so you like you can see it's a little bit of a spotlight you can see the difference from here now if you get further away you can just completely light it and there is no more light there now obviously you are too close to the light and you can see it pop um, like uh, upping its values or hiding it but if you put these values higher or like uh, instead of doing uh, as a distance you kind of do when like hide all the lights inside the house when you get out of the house and when you go into the house you pop it up again so that's another trick you can do especially in more open areas but it's basically a more uh, customizable way so based on the distance the lights get 
uh, you know turn off more and more but you know you can you can really see any performance costs but if you start um, you know drag dragging and putting more of these lights into the scene um, you can actually start seeing that they start costing more and more performance now I don't actually have um, you know enough lights or enough meshes like uh, physical materials that is going to reflect lights off and etc to be you actually noticing anything on performance this way but I'm just gonna create a lot of them so you can actually see how this works another thing that I don't know if I told you if you go into the viewport point lights actually made them movable instead of static or stationary this way because most of the time um, for this to work to change values in real time they need to be movable but normally if they are stationary you don't really need to worry about performance because the light is going to be baked so it won't cost probably much on the um, you know on the actual game so you can probably just toggle on and off and you know it won't be a problem in performance the problem in performance comes when the there are movable or dynamic lights you can see that totally dynamic all scene dynamic shadows and slowest rendering so it costs much more if i play you can probably uh, see a little bit on performance I don't know in the video but maybe on your own computer uh, but you can see that the lights are individually popping and turning off and as you get closer they are they're basically individual so you can use this to when you have a lot of lights um, using this code or this kind of code you can uh, make your lights much more effective so because I, I decided to do this tutorial I never done anything like this but I actually seen when I was working on my own projects that if I start adding like um, uh, this, this kind of lights with like a lot of indirect lighting intensity and if I had more volumetric stuff with higher values uh, you know the, the frame rate really drops especially in larger levels it's, it really costs a, lo a lot but with this kind of system I hope um, it's better it, you know in theory it is because they're not being rendered most of the time when you're further away from them so yeah, I hope you guys um, find this useful in any way so these values are actually not really realistic so you need to change these values to your own needs it depends on the level if you have like a lot of obstacles you probably can turn this less but if you have uh, your level is like an open area you probably need to make this bigger so you don't see the lights popping on and off you know it really depends but play around with these values and you know it's really important for you to do this kind of stuff when optimizing a game but um, let me see if I can actually let me pump this indirect lightning to the max and volumetric scattering to the max because that's gonna increase the performance so I can probably see uh, if I show FPS here no they're still 60 okay it doesn't really cost that much right now because you know this, there are not enough lights and not enough materials to reflect but uh, rem uh, believe me when you're doing your own game you're gonna start seeing you know the performance dropping um, so yeah I don't really know what to do for this series anymore like uh, about performance I don't really have um, anything substantial for me to do a video on because lots of level streaming world composition and you know working on performance uh, like performance on lightning it's probably the only thing I know right now to teach you if I find out anything uh, that is worth doing a video about I will make it but anyway um, if you guys have any suggestions or you know about something that you want me to cover uh, you know about basically anything uh, you can let me know in the comments thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye bye